I am Mrs. Woodward. I am Rebecca Woodward's mom and Hudson's aunt, and I am a functional diagnostic nutritionist. So that means I use really cool lab testing, like testing your blood and your hair and your poop and your urine to get to the bottom of people's chronic health issues. And a lot of uh, dysfunction stems from hormones, so we are going to talk about hormones today. I hope you are ready. Let's get into our presentation. The title of my presentation is Food for Fuel, or what your body needs for sports, sleep, Oh, sports, school, sleep, and sanity. And I was already thinking ahead there. Did you get my alliteration? I totally put an alliteration there. Um, what we're going to talk about today is some of the reasons why maybe you don't feel your best and how you can start preparing your body now to enjoy really robust health as you get older because it's important. You only get one body, right? And so you want to take the very best care you can of that body that the Lord gave you. So I'm going to ask you a series of questions. I was supposed to do this in person in your health classes, um, but quarantine. So some of the fun activities and games I had for you, you won't be able to participate in. Um, which honestly might make my presentation a little bit more boring, but I'm going to try to make it as exciting as possible because hormones are really cool. All right. What foods make you feel good? What foods bring you energy and joy and clear skin and good digestion? Your tummy shouldn't ever hurt really. And if it does, that's a problem. What foods make you feel bad? What foods make you feel tired or give you a stomach ache? What foods make you feel achy? Those are problem foods. And a lot of times you just feel that way and you don't realize that it's due to some food you ate or something you put in your body. And so I'm gonna teach you how you can figure out what are causing the, some of those symptoms like being tired or having a tummy ache or being achy. One of the other questions I wanna ask you is, how is your sleep? What time do you go to bed? Do you use your phone or tablet or computer or TV before bed? Do you feel rested when you wake up? Because you should feel rested when you wake up. If you're going to bed after midnight, you're really shortchanging your body of some great rest and repair time it has. The hours before midnight are doubly as effective for that rest and repair phase of your body while it's growing and while it's uh, repairing itself as the hours after midnight. So if at all possible, try to get in bed before midnight so that your body can regenerate itself in the best way possible. If you don't feel rested when you wake up, that's an issue too. Now maybe you're like my kids and during quarantine you're sleeping until like 8, 9, 10 o'clock. Those are, those are good times. You should sleep in that late. Your body as a teenager really needs lots and lots of sleep. And so you want to be sleeping as long as you possibly can. That's only if you get into bed though before midnight. If you get into bed at like 1 a.m. and you sleep till 1 p.m., then you're a little bit of a slouch, right? But if you get in bed by 1030 and you sleep till 8 or 9, that's really good, really balancing, really nourishing for your body. And those are two words I love. I like to teach my clients to ask themselves, is this balancing for my body? Is this nourishing for my body? Because when your body gets out of balance, your hormones get out of balance, and that's not great. How's your mood? Are you more sad than usual? Are you more angry than usual? More anxious or depressed than usual? I have a lot of clients under the age of 15, and many of them struggle with those things, being more sad than usual, struggling with anxiety or depression. If that's you, I really encourage you to reach out to your parent, reach out to Mrs. Toy. You can reach out to me and talk about those things because a body that is healthy shouldn't struggle with um, depression or anxiety. It should have really relatively balanced moods most of the time. So you know that if that is not you, that something might be at play, something deeper, maybe some hormonal imbalance. And we'll talk about why that could be. How's your energy? Do you get out of the bed in the do you get out of bed in the morning feeling rested? Because you should. Do you fall asleep after lunch? I don't know who your after lunch teacher is right now. It's probably your mom or dad. So um, there's not a lot you can do about that, I guess. Um, but you should also have enough energy for sports. Do you have enough energy for sports? Do you have enough energy to get up after dinner and go play outside on the trampoline with your brothers and sisters? Um, there should be plenty of energy um, and energy surges and spikes throughout your day so that you can get through the whole day without falling asleep or feeling sleepy sleepy. How's your attention span? Can you pay attention in class? Can you pay attention during study time? What about homework? Right now you're setting the stage for the next um, time in your life. High school, college, learning on the job. It's really important that you're able to hone in your attention span and be really attentive to what you're doing at the time. You should be able to finish your homework. You should be able to complete a test without a problem. And if you can't do that, then you know that there's also some hormonal imbalance at play. 
All right, what do all these things have in common? Hormones. They all have hormones in common. And hormones are simply chemical messengers. They're secreted by special glands in your body. For instance, your butterfly-shaped thyroid gland is right here, and that secretes thyroid hormone. It's a gland that secretes a hormone. Uh, it's a gland that secretes a hormone, and a hormone is just a chemical messenger. So it sends a letter from point A to point B telling another gland or another part of the body what to do. That's what a hormone does. It's made in one part part of the body and it travels to another part of the body. For instance, like thyroid hormone, thyroid hormone is secreted by the thyroid gland after the brain, the hypothalamus and pituitary tell the thyroid using a substance called TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone to make more thyroid hormone. And then that thyroid hormone is going to travel to your heart and increase your heart rate. It's going to travel to your hair, skin and nails and increase growth in your hair, skin and nails. Those are things that hormones do. They have a specific job in the body. They're secreted by glands and they, they, they encourage communication with the rest of the body. They control and regulate functions in the body. This is my super nerdy chart that we were going to play a game with and it was going to be really fun, but we can't do it now. I'm still including it for you because it's important. I want you to understand a few things. The chart's called steroid hormone metabolic pathways and the pregnenolone steel. And essentially what this chart is telling us is how to create healthy hormones in the body. I'm going to walk you through the process. Look with me at pregnenolone, which is that P word in all capital letters. Pregnenolone is your master hormone. Now, pregnenolone will convert into androgens like testosterone. Testosterone is a quintessentially male hormone, but women have it too. It's necessary for growth and muscle retention. It's necessary for healthy skin. It's necessary for building processes of the body. It's called an androgenic or building hormone. And we want plenty of testosterone, especially at this age, 12, 13, 14, you should have plenty of testosterone in your body because you're growing. It's a growth hormone. Now the androgens like testosterone and DHEA convert into the estrogens and you can see that there, estrone, estradiol, estriol, and those are quintessentially female hormones. But as, as women have testosterone, men also have some estrogen as well. That's how the Lord made our bodies. Now those hormones are important, especially at this age for healthy periods for girls and healthy growth in boys and healthy growth in, in, in young women as well. Now let's talk about what happens when your hormones get out of balance. Pregnenolone, you can follow along with me with the, all of those arrows, will convert into progesterone as well. And progesterone is, I have to say my favorite hormone, Pro progesterone is a shortened firm uh, a form of progestation hormone or for have a, healthy, a, baby a healthy hormone. pregnancy and a it's healthy what your baby. body but men have some progesterone too pregnant. and progesterone is kind of your relaxing hormone like your chill hormone your sleep hormone it's an important hormone for the body to have progesterone also converts into cortisol and cortisol is your stress hormone so cortisol is what you are experiencing the effects of when you get into a stressful situation let's say you're on your bike and you know you almost fall, but you don't fall, but you feel like you did, you know, you almost fell. And so your heart rate increases, your pupils have dilated, you might start sweating a little bit, you're laser focused at what could have been a really bad situation. That's the effects of cortisol on your body. It helps you get ready to either fight or fly away. We call it the fight or flight hormone. It's a hormone the Lord gave us to ensure the survival of humans. Um, we need to stay alive <laughs> because the Lord also gave us another command to be fruitful and multiply. And in order to do that, we have to be alive. And so that's the body's preferential pathway. It's what the body prefers to do. It prefers to keep itself alive. It doesn't prefer to have growth or healthy periods at the expense of just staying alive, right? And so pregnenolone, that master hormone, instead of creating a healthy cascade of growth and normal periods, will start to preferentially burn over to this progesterone pathway. So we're stealing all that pregnenolone in order to support the progesterone needs of the body because progesterone's, progesterone is converting into cortisol. So why is this important? Let's say you stay up late. Let's say you eat Takis all the time and never eat any apples. Let's say you're taking too many classes that are accelerated and you're, you know, studying all hours of the night. You're in three sports. You're doing church camps. You, you push your body too much. And that's something that not only you do, but your parents do as well. We all do it. Uh, that's a stress on the body. It starts to really stress the body out. And so the body starts pulling away this pregnenolone over into the progesterone pathway to supply the cortisol needs for 
of the body so that it can it can survive all of this stress. So what I usually see in my office now is young women are coming in with periods that aren't normal. Maybe they're having, you know, two or three bleeds a month or maybe they don't have a period at all after they had their period for the first time or maybe their moods are all out of balance or maybe their stomach is all out of balance. Um, these are problems that can happen. Sleep can be out of balance when, when your steroid hormone metabolic pathway is out of balance. Now, stress is one problem with the metabolic pathway. The other problem is just not creating a healthy pathway to begin with. So let's say that you don't have the raw materials to create a healthy pathway. You're going to have a problem like the one I was just describing. If you go up from pregnenolone, uh, up a little bit higher from LDL to cholesterol to acetylcoenzyme A, and acetylcoenzyme A is a unit of energy in the body. It's a, a creator of energy in the body. And you can see those two arrows pointing to acetylcoenzyme A. One is B5 and one is dietary fats. Now that's interesting. This is how we create a healthy hormone cascade. We have enough B vitamins and enough dietary fats. Now, I'm not talking about dietary fats from cup of noodles. And, um, you know, I'm not talking about B vitamins from a pill. Your B vitamins come from animal products and your dietary fats come from good, healthy animal products and healthy plant products. Um, so as I always say, if your great, 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 great grandmother or grandfather ate it, it's probably fine for you. If it was just created in the last 30, 60, 90, or 100 years, the Twinkie was created in 1910. You guys might not know what a Twinkie is, but essentially all these junk foods that we tend to eat now is our primary way of nourishment have only been around for the last, you know, 50 to 100 years and our bodies don't know what to do with them and they start messing up our hormones. So to create a proper hormone pathway, you're going to want plenty of good dietary fats like like animal proteins like a steak, like butter, like bacon, like avocado or coconut oil or nuts, and then plenty of good B vitamins and B vitamins come from animal products. Most notably B12, a unit of uh, a part of the creator of energy in the body um, will only come in animal products. Now, you guys might have heard a lot of controversy around this, like plant-based, whole food, vegan. You know, you might hear your parents toss around these terms. And, um, you know, I, I don't want to be combative with diet. I just want to tell you that really for healthy hormones, you should have plenty of good animal products in your diet on a daily basis. And if that's something you or your parents want to talk about more with me, I would love, love to talk more about it. We can set up a, a Zoom meeting. We can set up an email series, um, you know, a phone call. I would love love to discuss that with you because really my passion lies in helping young men and women and older men and women create and keep healthy hormones. Okay, so that's our steroid hormone metabolic pathway chart. I was going to bring in candy and we were going to link arms and create a pathway, but we can't do that. So here's the chart for you. Um, you know, study it and let me know if you have any questions. All right. So we can't do the game. Um, let's talk about the three macronutrients. We're going to start with protein. Protein is from the Greek word proteus, which means of primary importance. So it's the most important macronutrient. Macro just means large. And nutrient is something that you give your body that's nourishing. So it means that the main categories of nourishing foods for the body. Protein is the first one. Protein clocks in at four calories per gram um, and is really satisfying. If you eat a big old steak, it's going to be really hard for you to fit in like a whole door Sunday afterwards, right? Um, you can get protein from chicken, fish, turkey, seafood, beef, lamb, game. Games like anything, you know, your dad shoots <laughs> um, or your uncle or your grandpa shoots. Um, you can also get uh, protein from things like beans and rice or certain vegetables or even fruit. Broccoli has protein. Apples have protein, but they're incomplete proteins. And you want complete proteins, which mean they have all of the amino acids, all 22 amino acids, 21 plus methionine, selenomethionine. So 21 to 22 amino acids that your body needs because your body is built out of amino acids. Everything in your body is built out of protein. And so you've got to give your body protein to build back up. You want to grow bigger. You want to have healthy hormones. You want to be stronger. You want to sleep well. You need plenty of protein. 
All right, next is fat, and fat clocks in at nine calories per gram, but you need less of it, so it's more satisfying. And as we learned, fat or cholesterol, dietary fat can turn into cholesterol, but your body can also make its own cholesterol. If it doesn't have enough, that's not necessarily the best way to go about doing it, though. If you can give your body good fats, you can build healthy hormones. So here we have um, fish and nuts and avocados and olive oil and fish oil supplements. Um, I would include red meat in there as well. A good fatty cut of red meat is great for your body and great for your hormones. Now carbohydrates are the third macronutrient and I'm going to tell you a secret. Your body runs on sugar. Your body runs on glucose. In order to create ATP or adenosine triphosphate, which is the creator unit of energy for the body, you need to have ribose, which is a sugar. You need glucose to shuttle into your cells, your muscles, your muscle cells, and your liver will keep up to 300 grams of glucose stored as glycogen um, for a period of time so that you have energy, so that you can, you can, you know, run and play soccer and swim and jump on the trampoline. Those are all things you should be able to do and good quality carbohydrates will give you the energy to do that. Your body runs on glucose though and not fructose. What do I mean by that? That's like Coca-Cola and energy drinks and anything that's sweetened with high fructose corn syrup. You can look on the back of things like Coke and Sprite and root beer and see that high fructose corn syrup are one of the first ingredients in that soda. Fructose is actually really bad for your liver. Um, the body will shunt fructose right into your liver through the hepatic vein into the liver and so a lot of people might age and a little bit older will start to suffer from what they call non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. That's something you shouldn't have to worry about, but I guarantee you some of you are already starting to have to worry about that because you're drinking so much soda. Not to say don't ever drink soda, but you know, think about what are you doing to your body? Is it a nourishing choice to drink two or three sodas a day or is it an imbalancing, unnourishing choice for your body to drink two or three sodas a day? Glucose is better than fructose for the body. High fructose, corn syrup anyways. Um, so what's the difference here? Really, when it comes down to it again, did your great, great, great grandmother and grandfather eat it? If they did, it's safe for you. It's good for you. It's nourishing for you. If you know, God didn't make it and they didn't eat it 200 years ago, it's probably not the best food for your body. Okay, problems I see in my office with hormone imbalance are some things you guys might struggle with. Depression, anxiety, sleep issues, anger, period problems for girls, and weight imbalances. These are all hormone issues. These chemical messengers in the body get the wrong signal sometimes because you're not giving it the proper food and the proper nourishment that, that you need to create you know, really healthy hormones. And so your body starts talking back to you and it will start getting depressed or anxious. It'll start not sleeping well. It'll start feeling really angry. That's actually a liver problem when you feel angry all the time. So be nice to your liver by eating lots of fruits and vegetables. Um, by having period problems. If you're, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15, you should have a normal and painless period. You shouldn't be out of school for two or three days with a really painful period. That's not normal. There are things you can do really easily through diet and rest and stress relief to pull down that pain and have a great period, girls. Um, and then weight imbalances. Your body, you know, through hormones like leptin and ghrelin and insulin will, will either put on weight or take off weight at an unusual rate when their hormones hormone imbalance issues there. All right. All disease starts in the gut. It's true. The father of modern medicine, Hippocrates, was famous for saying this. At least we think he was. It might be an urban legend, but it's true. All disease starts in the gut. A healthy gut means a healthy central nervous system or brain, a healthy brain. And your gut and your brain are actually both brains. The gut is called the second brain. And this brain and your gut brain talk to each other by something called the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve wanders. Vagal means wandering. It wanders all the way down the back of your head to your stomach, and those two brains talk to each other all the time. That's why sometimes when you're stressed, you have like butterflies in your stomach. You know, before you run a track meet or play a big game, maybe you feel like you gotta go poop. Uh, there's just weird things that happen to your stomach when your brain is perceiving a happy or a sad or an anxious emotion because the two are linked. Now, 
when your gut functions off, maybe you've got little critters that live in there that shouldn't be there. Every gut has lots of bacteria and most of those bacteria are good bacteria. But when you have bad bacteria in your body or dysbiosis, an imbalance of bacteria in your gut, it can start to affect your brain. And your gut bugs need good food too. They need a lot of fruits and vegetables. They need a lot of good fats to break down into short chain fatty acids to feed the colon cells to keep your gut healthy. You've got to have good food to create a good gut and a good gut will create a good brain. All right. A healthy gut needs plenty of fruits, lots of vegetables, fats, proteins, water, plenty of vitamin D, the sun, um, good sleep, and then probiotics, which you can take as a pill or you can eat fermented food, and prebiotics. And prebiotics basically means fiber. And fiber in fruits and vegetables and whole grains will feed those probiotics, the good bacteria in your gut. You want to feed the good bacteria and not the bad bacteria. If your tummy hurts all the time, you've got too much bad bacteria in your gut. And we can test for that doing a stool test. I don't see your stool. Stool means poop. I send it to my lab and my lab looks at it and tells me what's going on with the makeup of the bugs in your gut. And if the makeup of the bugs, if the, 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 you know, ratio of bugs in your gut are more bad bugs instead of good bugs, you're going to feel like you have tummy aches all the time, or you might feel tired all the time, or maybe you have eczema or skin rashes or itchy skin or, you know, something where you know it's not right. That can really be attributed to these, these, you know, gut bugs. <laughs> say that three times fast, gut bugs, um, that are, that are out of order. All right. So here's my challenge for you. Print off my fruits and vegetables, get to a hundred chart, hand it into your parents. Every time you eat a fruit, mark a box. Every time you eat a vegetable, mark a box. And after you get to a hundred, exchange it to your parent for something that you've already agreed on. Maybe you get to go to your grandparents' house and spend the night. Maybe you get to go pick out something at the dollar store. I don't know, something, you know, you get V-Bucks, right? But, you know, exchange it for something that you're working toward because fruits and vegetables are a great and healthy part of um, a diet that you should be eating. I also want to ensure that you're getting protein. So remember, protein means of primary importance, and you should be getting about a palm-sized serving of protein three times a day. You guys have seen me at school. I'm like almost six feet tall. So my palm's probably bigger than your palm, but whatever your palm size, that should be about the amount of protein that you're getting three times a day. So on the chart, it shows you, you know, cheese, salmon, um, cod, beans, or meat. Those are good and acceptable protein choices. Those will give you energy and happy hormones. For males and females, here's a basic chart of easy ways that you can start to get happy hormones, okay? The first one is eat. Listen, there's nothing more boring than the girl that talks about her diet and her weight all the time. I guarantee you. It doesn't matter if you're a girl or a boy. Don't talk about those things. It just doesn't matter. Do yourself a favor and just skip over that part of your life and just eat nourishing and balancing foods. They're so good for you. You want to feed your body for fuel. So don't diet. Don't go on like TikTok diets and you know, flat belly diets and all these things that don't work because they're just a little silly. Just eat the way I'm teaching you and eat plenty of that food. Don't ever shortchange yourself food because um, your body needs it. So eat, eat balanced food, eat things that your great, great, great grandmother and grandfather ate and eat often. And then also make sure that you rest. Quarantine's helping us remember that we need to rest, that we have to sleep, that we need to nap, that we need to take downtime, watch a movie, read a book. Our bodies need rest. Healthy hormones need rest. So take a time out every day. Number, number three is to cleanse. And I don't mean anything weird. I just mean take out the things that you know aren't serving your body. For instance, like, you know, too much Takis or popcorn or um, candy, Skittles. You know, you don't need those things every day. Every once in a while, it's fine. You should enjoy a treat. Um, but if that's the bulk of your diet, it's no wonder your tummy hurts all the time. It's no wonder that your period's off or that you're not able to focus on a test or a quiz. So make sure you pull out those things that you know are not nourishing for your body. And you guys are smart enough to know what's nourishing and what's not nourishing for your body. The last step is movement. So not exercise. You don't have to go to the gym. You just go outside and jump on a trampoline, go swim, play a neighborhood game of street hockey, um, go for a walk with your mom or a bike ride with your dad or call up your grandparents and ask if you can do yard work for like, you know, money, <laughs> but do something and get outside and move your body. 
Um, we did have a magnesium demonstration, which is going to be fun and exciting, but we can't do that right now. That's okay. If you have questions or if your parents have questions, I would encourage you to reach out to me. I do have a website and there it's just full of things like recipes and meal plans, free resources for you. If you don't know where to start, I have a whole week of batch cooking for breakfast and lunch and dinner. Um, you can find me on Instagram or Facebook. Um, I am kid friendly because <laughs> I have four. Um, so, uh, use those resources. That's the only reason. And I mentioned them is that there are free resources available for your families so that you can start building healthy hormones now. It's going to be helpful for you. It's going to be helpful for your families and it's going to be helpful for your future. So thanks for taking this time with me to talk about what makes happy and healthy hormones. And if you have any questions, reach out to Mrs. Toy and we can set something up where I can answer them. Have a great day.